Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Next up, um, well, let me tell you the story of how we actually managed to get the get this next interview recorded because it, it wasn't a smooth path. Uh, let me tell you, um, we had some tech issues where the internet went down and the phone call um, just wasn't exactly clear. And I think we had to schedule this particular interview maybe three or four times. Until we finally got something that that should be on track. Um, This is a really good friend, and you can just when as soon as you step in a room with with uh, with Robin Metak, you can feel the gratitude that she gives off. And I'm grateful that she is my friend, and I'm grateful to always have her on because one, she's always on topic and she always puts up a great conversation that you do you ask a question and what unfolds is just magic robin is a relationship expert and let's listen to why she says she's grateful for what she has in her life so here we go with Robin attack. Like, it's really vital, and sometimes these things sound cliché, but in truth, there's always some root truth to cliché, and if we can get out of our head about, you know, this this kind of movement, some people, you know, they kind of go into the opposite, and it's like, oh, well, everyone's kind of doing it, or, but it, there's a reason people are doing it, it does work. Yeah. Um, it, it, it does uh, truly work. Um, some of the things that have, have been said um, about how it can make you healthier, how it can um, just give you a better outlook so you can figure things through a little easier, things like that, right? Yeah, it, it helps us to appreciate what we do have because if we're constantly focused on the negative and what we don't have or, you know, we fall into that victim mentality that we have no control over things and some things we don't. Mm-hmm. And that's the learning. It's like we, we take care of ourselves in whatever way we can and that gratitude helps us to have more of what we do want because it's in those simple things that 
everything else comes in. If you think about relationships, if you ignore the relationship and just take it for granted, what happens? Well, we end up separating, divorcing, all of those things. But when we're grateful for those relationships and the connections we have, it deepens our intimacy. We have more fullness and success in our life and our relationships because we do have that gratitude. And so we can have it for those external things, but also for ourselves and who we are, how we come into the world, what our gifts are, and just appreciating ourselves for all parts of ourselves and learning not to judge ourselves. And our society really focuses on the competition and how you know, we need to be better and get the better grades to get into the schools we want, all these different areas where mm-hmm. we're feeling like we're competing. But in truth, there is enough if we go to that way of thinking about there is enough for everyone and we can support each other because that's where we can be grateful for our uniqueness of who we are. And we can complement each other. Because if we were all the same, it would be really boring. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, I appreciate all the differences and the similarities. You know, in some ways we're very similar. We have basic needs of love and safety and all of those things. But we're all unique in how we need those and want them in our life and how we express ourselves. So that core essence of who we are and when we can appreciate and love ourselves and be grateful for that, Mm -hmm. then we even expand more because with our being, we're constantly either evolving and expanding or we're going in the opposite direction. There is no stasis in life, so the more that we can expand into who we are in that gratitude for life and all that we do have, more successful in all areas of our life, no matter what it is. Yeah. You know, we we, we hear that a lot, and I think that a lot of people um, think that, oh, that's crap, that I'm ungrateful, I'm I'm just going to find success. Um, But it's it's true in the fact that um, that if we're grateful for, for the little successes we have, our universe wants to give us bigger ones, right? Yeah, so they build on each other. So if, if you think about a child learning something, when they get frustrated, they're not seeing any progress. And if you break it down into little bits and say, okay, well, let's just do this piece, and then we see the excitement and the joy and it's like oh I've learned that and and they're feeling really good about themselves they build that self-esteem and then going to the next piece and then we can learn from there and so when we're brought up with that kind of thinking then we have a lot of good self-esteem and we can tune into that gratitude so much easier because it's more available but when we grow up with all the criticism and, oh, you didn't do that right and focus on the negative, then it feels like it's such a big gap. Mm-hmm. And so it's like just increasing each time and not making it so out of our experience or too much to be able to do. But if we just go from, okay, I'm going to not judge myself, let those feelings come up, let them be expressed, let them go, and then what's the next thing I can feel better about? You know, I have my sight, I have my ability to walk, I have people I can call, I know there's support out there if I need something else. There are so many things that we can just start to tune into. Right. Yeah. Um... It sounds like we can we can actually uh, build a, a support team for ourselves just by being grateful for having one person show up for help, and then maybe another person will show up, and 
Next thing you know, we have a whole network of friends, and we're all supporting each other, right? Yeah, it's, it's we all need community. If there's one thing COVID has taught us, you know, how often are we hearing you're not alone? Because people are being physically isolated and distanced, but we don't have to feel isolated, right? The, the word alone, we can move into all one. So when we have our connection to ourselves, to our spirit, to who mm -hmm. we are, then we can reach out and connect with others, whether it's friends, acquaintances, um, support groups, even events. You know, I put some events on Eventbrite, and it's a way to bring people together for community and meditation and different ways to bring us into that sense of even though we might not have that contact, there are ways that we can connect. And even doing small things for ourselves, like... Um, there's a little exercise with the people where we just kind of run our hands down our arms to feel that touch because as humans we need that. So having that gratitude that I can do that for myself and calm myself and have some self-care. And I think it's so important to realize that with any challenge in our life, it's almost all temporary because it's how we think about it, how we react to it, how we deal with it, and we always have a choice. Right. And, you know, all of the different things that I dealt with growing up, it's like I could very easily have been one of those people on the downtown east side or might not even be here today. Yeah. But for some reason, I had that sense of optimism or curiosity or whatever that was awareness somehow to to want to keep going to want to find a better way and out of that came the gratitude that I did eventually find the support and the different things I needed to be able to build upon myself and who I was mm -hmm. yeah, you told me one time that um, it, it came down to a single choice that um, you chose um, to say no to a substance and at the, if you had said yes it would have been, been a total pivot in the other direction absolutely you know I, when I came down to go to university I ended up in a really bad situation in the place I was living and had things stolen and ended up staying somewhere that wasn't so <laughs> good and we were actually I had met up with this person and we were downtown on the downtown east side and they said you know let's go get some drugs and something in me made that choice in that moment knowing that that was a turning point and it's like no and I walked away and got on a bus and Honestly, I don't think I'd be here today if I'd made that other choice. So we need to make those choices and realize we have, we make those choices in big and small ways, minute by minute. You know, if you think about the thoughts in your head, we have a choice to then shift it, to think something different, to question the thoughts. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with everything that we do. It's like, reviewing what have I thought about this before where did it get me maybe I can do something different and and I think that's the key right when we can get into that awareness and the choices that we have then we can bring in the gratitude and realize really in uh, the big picture of life is this so important you know am I sitting here worrying about something that might or might not happen which takes me out of the present and really doesn't serve me or anyone else. So the more that we can be present, the more we are in gratitude. And I think that's really what a lot of the, even the research so, shows. So whether we think about it, 
from an energetic perspective or a scientific perspective, it's all the same. It's that shift that we can create for ourselves and really tap into the gratitude of choosing something that makes us happy, joyful, present, connected, whatever it is for us in the moment, Mm -hmm. and not judging whatever that is. Right. How do you how do you um, teach people to to make um, make those choices? So a lot of it is, is awareness, and mm-hmm. so there's different practices that I give people. So some of the areas I work in with people is understanding what motivates them and who they are in their core through the Enneagram, which helps us to see how we view the world, and then through the meditation and healing, where we connect more to our spiritual self and learn to find those answers within, rather than looking externally for what should I do, who am I, all of those things that we're kind of taught in our society. The more that we can go inward and understand who we are, then we can build on those awareness practices to find out what am I doing? What are the automatic responses that I've been doing for all my life? All those patterns, those things that may or may not serve me anymore. Places where I might be in arrested development in my journey through the through my childhood. Maybe it's a trauma that happened that we need to address so that we can look at it from the perspective of this is something that happened to me. It wasn't personal. I was there. I unfortunately had this situation that did harm me, deal with the emotions and everything else that come out of that. And then what what can I do differently? How can I take care of that? wounded inner child and help that child grow up so that I can be the adult in my life. Mm -hmm. I think so many people get stuck in places that they they don't even realize and they come in out in these places like relationships where we act like we're four years old and it's my way or the highway instead of that normal (laughs) adult that we can be but we revert back into those places where the wounding is and until we address those kind of core needs then we're not going to have the life that we really want Mm -hmm. and have that gratitude for everything that we have and having the gratitude as we go through it it's like when people talk about celebration it's like yeah we'll celebrate at the end well no we need to do it all the way along and it's the same with gratitude the more we can be grateful for the unfolding of the information that maybe wasn't available to us in the past because we didn't feel safe to express it. And so having the gratitude for all the feelings, everything that you're going through to know that this is such a gift to you to be able to really be who you are in the world and have the life that you want. Right. So we need to celebrate and be grateful for the the little bits as they happen so that we can we don't have to wait till the the end of it to to be grateful. We can do it along the way. Yeah, exactly. We we do that all the way along. If you I, I I guess I tend to like to use the example for children because they have that kind of purity that they haven't gone through all this training through our society so they're a bit more expressive of how we are and we can look at that Mm -hmm. they're they're in the moment yeah they're having fun all the time they're they're in delight they're in curiosity they're in engagement with life and what's going on with them in the moment. Mm -hmm. And when we can be present to that and that gratitude, 
then we're present. Right. And we can have that same joy and fun and curiosity for ourselves. Yeah. I know for myself, I, I, um, as an adult, you hear so many times somebody say to you, well, I don't know why you think you can celebrate that little thing and that's nothing you didn't do anything yet you have so many people saying those sort of things how do you start to tune that out so that you can be free and and celebrate and be grateful all the time okay I'm not sure I quite understood the question I didn't quite hear it all I, I think okay. I'll answer something and then if that's so not the right thing you can let me know <laughs> How do I turn out the How do I turn out the naysayers? <laughs> oh, the naysayers. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's always going to be people that are going to say, "Oh, you're Pollyanna," or whatever it is. And you know, I've had that directed at myself as well. And one of the comments was. Oh, you just think, you know, think positive thoughts and it's all going to be okay. And that's not true. The way I look at it is I can be in my pain, I can be in my joy, I can be in whatever emotion that I'm feeling and still be grateful Mm -hmm. because that makes me human. So when I was going to breast cancer and spending all that time going inward and releasing the pain from the trauma, crying over, you know, my mom's suicide attempt and that child that felt so abandoned and so alone, I was so grateful because I could reach and find it where I couldn't find it before. So it's not that we're walking around with this happy face saying we're happy all the time and everything is just wonderful it's about having the gratitude of wherever we are because if we're just thinking about only that high emotion and the best day that we can have it's not real Mm -hmm. we want to be real about what's going on and realize that life has its ups and downs and that's part of the something to be grateful for because without having those changes we wouldn't appreciate the other parts Hmm. and I know that this is part of um, people who talk about manifestation and people who put that down because they say well if it works why don't you have it right now well if you had everything right now would you appreciate it no Hmm. (laughs) because (laughs) there's there's no path, right? It's like, oh, I can just create whatever I want, and that's not how it works. We need to work through and have those achievements and feel the different feelings in order to get there. Yeah, that, that, that is true, and I do believe in, in, in manifesting um, that um, by our thoughts and in uh, in our general actions, that we manifest um, our lives to be happy, or mm-hmm. we manifest them not to be happy. <laughs> I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, and and that's one of the things that you said. You talked about the action, and I think that's one of the other things that people don't add into the equation. The same with gratitude. It's like if I'm not feeling gratitude, I need to take some action to find out why I'm not there Mm -hmm. and what do I need. The same with manifestation. I need to take some actions towards what I want. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. We can't just, you know, the, the past days where we had the people meditating on the mountaintop, that's that's not our society. We need to be with the people. We need to be doing things, connecting, and engaging in order to make things happen and to, to be where we want to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, 
you're not a very successful coach. You, you have uh, a great practice, and um, I said five books, was it, that you have a co-author? Was it five? How many, how many books have you, have you co-authored? Uh, we just had another book come out yesterday, so six books now. Six and books. So, <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. And talk about manifestation, they actually won a class certificate as well. <laughs> Very cool. So, now, with all the success, um, can you tell everybody a little bit about your process of helping people um, just live, live a little better and be a little happier? Could you repeat that? Yeah, uh, I'll repeat it. Um, can you tell people about your process of how you teach people to live a little better and be a little happier? Sure. Yeah, so part of that is understanding who we are. And I believe in a holistic sense, so mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And often what I find is the missing piece is that spiritual sense or connection to ourselves. And certainly that was my story going through breast cancer and having put my spiritual self to the side and then regaining that connection was really pivotal for me to, to find those places and have a better direction and know where I wanted to go and who I was and and what was important to me. And so for some people, it's coming right into the class where they learn the meditation and the healing system. For others, it's coming in in a different way where it's more dealing with their type through the Enneagram or some inner child work. Often shadow work is involved with that as well where we're looking at the parts of ourselves where we haven't wanted to look at that part of ourselves and seeing what it was originally intended for, how we can integrate that particular part of ourselves so that we can have the awareness and the ability to have those unconscious patterns come forward so that we can make the choice. And along the way, there could be some conflict resolution things that come up or other parts of self, the childhood trauma, that kind of thing. So it really depends on the individual and where they are and what the need is. And finding that place where they're able to take care of themselves and deal with things in a safe, healthy, and gentle way. That's one of the big things that is really important to me is that people do it in a way that doesn't put them into more trauma because there's lots of different things out there, but if we just kind of go straight to the core, sometimes it's too much for people. So it really depends on their path and their capacity and so what we do is expand their capacity to be able to hold more of themselves, more emotion, more of whatever they need to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, we're starting to run out of time and I want, be able to, well, I want people to be able to get back ahead of you um, after all this and or maybe even find uh, the that you've helped write and um, so why don't you tell everybody how to, the best ways to get a hold of you and how to find your books my email is robin r-o-b-y-n at a life of choice dot ca and you know, always text me as well at 604-644-0017 and the website is a life of choice.ca. Cool. All right. Well, thank you for.
for joining us today. It's been always oh, uh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. I think that's such a wonderful thing to do for this time of year and help us remember what we need to remember. Yeah. Well, um, if people have been listening all the way, all the way through, then uh, they heard somewhere in the beginning of all this that the reason why I did this is because so many times January 1st comes and we're going to make these huge marriage resolutions and by the 15th of January they fall far and by the wayside but maybe if we instead of trying to change huge things we do something a little bit smaller and just try to add a little more gratitude to our lives and be grateful for the things that we have in front of us the universe will give us more <laughs> so yeah it, and instead of making those big idea things that maybe we know that haven't actually happened in the past but we make those same ones year over year maybe start like you say with the gratitude practice and just bring that in and see what flows from that and how it might come in mm-hmm. in a more natural process where we don't have to start beating ourselves up rather than coming from the other perspective of yeah I'm working through this and, and building as I go yeah I think it's a lot easier if you if you fall off the gratitude wagon it's a lot easier to jump back on again right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, so, yeah. so again, thank you for joining us today, Robin, and thank you everybody for listening to uh, the series and Robin Talk, and we will uh, talk to you again next time. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.